I mean, Kingston, I tried to escape again. I tried to climb the walls of Kingston Penitentiary, going up one of the gun towers, and they found me in the yard at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the warden, all these guns are on me, and the spotlight's on me, and the warden saying, well, I know how it was. I was in a prison war camp, you know. If I was doing 30 years, I'd escape too. In some ways, it's a comedy, you know. In comedy, there's always tragedy. Here's a guy, he goes into the prison. He's an absolutely terrible bank robber. He gets caught every time. So he goes into prison, and in prison, he becomes a somebody within himself and to other prisoners. And he finally beats the prison system. He beats it because he learns to write. And he's a hugely successful writer. It's astonishing. He gets the governor general's award, and they have to let him go. And he spends all his money, and uh, he's back in prison again. I learned the power, the power of the, the pen, you know, over the sword, you know, and that it took me a long time. It took me about 25 years of suffering, and half my 24 years in prison, I'm up to 27 years now, was spent in solitary confinement. <laughs> How to deal with Roger I think that's what it came down to you have this hyper child and who's gonna buck you all the way and do what he wants anyway and uh, so uh, there was a lot of confrontation there between my dad and Roger my hyperactivity embodied the devil and the only way to get the devil idea was to be idea. so everybody stood stood in line and and by the time I was 16 I was so punchy I didn't know if I was coming or going Young man, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's only me, Major Roberts, from the Salvation Army. I brought you a small gift in a prayer. The good Lord hasn't forgotten you. Is he always like this? Go on, Roger. Take it. it it's for you. When Roger used to do it, he did it Montreal style, which is um, a very aggressive commando style attack on the bank. Uh, two or three guys go in, they pull their balaclavas down over their face, they yell, they, uh, they have guns, they show their guns, they tell people to get back. Uh, one guy or two guys jump the counter, they rifle through the tills, they're out the door, they're gone, they're in their getaway car. I'll say a special prayer for you. Have a very Merry Christmas, Roger. So anyhow, we're talking there, and the guard is calling them from away up on the tier. Yeah, yeah, just a minute, he says. And he kept talking and talking, and finally, the guard was down, right down there, and he said, I told you to come upstairs, and he's walking over, shaking his finger in his face, and, and Roger decked him. And I thought, oh, Jesus Christ. And I said, you goofy bastard, you just got out of the hole, and now you're going back in. In many ways, uh, he's a very charming individual, um, very normal in many ways, but uh, at the same time, he's, um, he's wild. My candies were all jelly beans, a big bag of jelly beans, all different colors, you know. It was the first alien thing that came in my cell in almost two years, you know. And, and I took it, and I went in the corner, I sat there with my jelly beans, and I wanted to eat the jelly beans real bad. I said, no, it's 6 o'clock, and it's going to be Christmas Eve at midnight, and I'll, I'll wait till midnight, and I'll have a party, you know. I had all the greens, the yellows, the orange, the blues all set out, and I'm wondering which one they're going to eat. And I, I said, oh, wait, here comes the guard. And it's midnight, the shift is changing, and, it's, and the nasty guy's always on that shift. And it suddenly came to me, I'll write a word on the floor, but I had no education. I couldn't go beyond four letters, eh? I find him a very readable author. I enjoyed it. it when you think of a Governor General's Award, you think of something rather ponderous and lofty and inapproachable, but that's not. It's one of the more readable books I've ever sat down, and I had a very difficult time putting it down. I waited, and I waited, and then suddenly I heard him stop at my window, and I, and I was imagining my mind's eye, him getting that deer on his face. You know, suddenly I pulled my hands away. He looked down, and he saw the word I wrote, and I looked up, and he was livid. He had been there about 40 years, you know, and he was just livid with anger. And he was shaking his fist and banging on the plexiglass. And then it came to me, the power of the, of the, 
of the pen over the sword, you know, and, and the power of the written word.